Namaskar. I am grateful to the Indian Mission for hosting today's talk to commemorate the 148th birth anniversary of Sardar Vallabhbhai Patel. Today's talk will highlight his leadership, his immense contribution towards India's struggle for independence, national integration and unity. Sardar Patel showed a moral high ground of leadership throughout his life in his profession as a lawyer for the nationalist cause, as a politician and as a sound democrat whose solidarity and skill were undoubted and inspired loyalty. Sardar Patel's strength lay in practical determination and judgment. His programs of action were not hypothetical but administrative and executive. Sardar Patel's regional roots showed that his style of leadership remained significant during the long period of non-cooperation and still had considerable value in resolving significant political problems in contemporary India. He possessed a very independent and discerning mind which could stand up to the colonial officials. As a lawyer, he could make shrewd judgment about the court and he had a great legal skill in understanding where the opponent's case was defective. The most famous trait of leadership concerns overt events when he had been influential and effective in, in getting things done. His contribution resided in action, not so much in speech making, either in small personal face-to-face -face situations or in the larger scene of practical politics. He was a far-sighted, sensible and a decisive leader who knew how to deliver important projects. He had the practical wisdom of knowing what was possible to achieve. Sardar Patel's pioneering leadership clearly embodied Indian culture. Sardar Patel's origin was humble, yet he grew into a great Indian, the unifier and consolidator of a vast country that faced many challenges for integration on the eve of independence. He was a man of common sense, of few words, but they were words of wisdom and his loyalty to Mahatma Gandhi was unquestionable. He had definitive views, had a wit all his own and could delight people with laughter through his sharp wit. He made up his mind instantly and adhered to the decision, though he was open to conviction and change. He had a genius for details and no detail was irrelevant to him. The mere presence of this Iron Man of India displayed an air of strength, confidence, determination and faith. His concern was always to stress and share the civic basis of Swaraj or self-rule. To benefit the poor and downtrodden, he had said, and I quote, humility is essential. I am pained whenever I find it lacking. Our proper place is not at the vantage point of power, but at the vantage point of service, unquote. Sardar Patel's legacy is associated with the unity and integrity of India. His crucial role in integrating the princely states and in furthering national unity in the aftermath of India's independence. His negotiation skills, precision, firmness and administrative efficiency facilitated to achieve this remarkable feat. Equally, he stands out as the first major leader of the independence movement who came from a rural background, whose leadership in the various satyagraha and non-violent civil disobedience movements is remarkable. His inclusive approach was focused with laser-like intensity on the essentials and the goal that had to be achieved. He undertook all the actions with total dedication, with no halfway measures. Sardar Patel's characteristic strength, resolve, wisdom, vision, nationalism helped in enabling India to achieve progress in its stature and growth from poverty to prosperity as a robust nation. He achieved this because of his mastery of personal leadership and institutional management. He was born on October 31st, 1876 in Nadia district in Gujarat state in India in a Patidar family who were landowners. Patidars are known for rallying closely against outsiders respecting their seniors and individual reverence to the extended family, along with a sense of equality. He instinctively acquired all these traits. From his mother, Sardar Patel imbibed the motherly instincts of spirit of service, also a taste for cleanliness and orderliness he observed throughout his life. 
from an early age, Sardar showed the qualities of responsibility, forthrightness, and courageousness. He was always attracted to justice, was skillful in debate, aware of his adversary's weak points, and an eloquent speaker from his school days. He had inherited the great quality of becoming a firebrand freedom fighter. Warrior-like character, restless spirit, and an irresistible desire to fight against injustice in the political stage in India. He had the power of persistence and capacity to bear hardships, fearlessness, bold temperament, along with a strong and stout build. In a valedictory call on independence, he had declared, and I quote, freedom was not won by the sword and will not be protected by guns alone. Internally, it is the honest core of people and the true realization of the responsibilities of a free citizen that alone can save freedom." Unquote. Sardar Patel possessed the qualities of a servant leader with exemplary traits. He was straightforward, said what was on his mind, and his commitment to India's independence was true and strongly defined. He had exceptional qualities of courage of conviction, measuring all the decisions against truth, injustice, and exploitation, coupled with a strong sense of humor transparency, total fearlessness, and successfully navigating to the right choice. He excelled in the art of persuasion. He kept people's interest at heart, and his organizing skills were always, will always remain an inspiration for every Indian. Sardar Patel's clear and accurate conception of his objectives and goal played a significant role in the Indian independence movement and later on as well. He was a self-taught man and had the ambition of becoming a barrister. To attain this goal, he initially became a lawyer by learning by himself and saved money for his ambition to become a barrister. He excelled as a criminal lawyer and mostly took up those involved in police cases and became a renowned lawyer. All this became possible because of his deep understanding of human nature, his deep analysis of the circumstances of the case and his penetrating cross-examination that helped him win more than 90% of the cases. Sardar Patel displayed an iron-like quality. He never wavered in the decision he once took and pursued them with a firm determination. He went to London in August 1910 and finished his course in 30 months at the Middle Temple, obtaining a first-class first degree and winning the prize of 50 pounds. He also took an examination in Roman law in which he stood first. In February 1913, he returned to India and started his practice in the Ahmedabad district in Gujarat. He was forthright, skilled, and totally dedicated to his profession. He excelled in cross-examination and could unnerve even well-prepared, tough witnesses. During the cases that he undertook, he indicated a meticulous understanding of facts, an accurate estimate of the opponent's points, a carefully planned defense and attack. Soon he achieved fame as a revered barrister and was an acknowledged success in his chosen career. What mattered above all was the fearlessness with which he handled the court, something unheard of in 1913-1914, before Mahatma Gandhi arrived in India from South Africa in 1915. In 1917, Sardar Patel entered the municipal politics of Ahmedabad. Soon after his election to the municipality, he established his authority and proved his mettle. An iron will to fight his way to victory. Also his ability as a leader of steadfast courage, dedicated to public cause, and one who could outmaneuver his opponent by staying firm to facts through a meticulous strategy and planning. He was a stern and a severe man, impartial and public-spirited, man of 42 years who came in direct contact with 48-year-old Mahatma Gandhi for the first time in November 1917 at the Gujarat Political Conference in Godhra. It was here that Mahatma Gandhi had made a statement of great significance. He said, and I quote, if we are unable to run our village administration skillfully, honestly, and justly, how can we justify our demand for the independence of our country?" Unquote. Sardar Patel, who was imbued in rural culture, could not agree more. He had proved this by his actions in running the civic administration of Ahmedabad.
people of Gujarat observed in him a new national leader in the making, an unrelenting crusader, an able administrator, and a skillful negotiator. In the year 1917, the nation witnessed Mahatma Gandhi's victories in quick succession in three satyagrahas, which made a sweeping effect on Sardar Patel's mind that was profound, far-reaching, and lifelong. It moved a mind that was resolute, analytical, and governed by reason. Mahatma Gandhi had translated the political mantra given by Lokmanya Tilak, and I quote, freedom is my birthright, and I will take it at any cost, unquote. Gandhiji translated that mantra into action to turn it into a reality by carrying it to India's teeming millions in her villages. In 1917, Champaran Satyagraha in Bihar, it was the great surge of thousands of indigo cultivators rising to Gandhiji's call. Gandhiji emerged as a great leader of the oppressed peasantry. Champaran Satyagraha had a sweeping effect on Sardar Patel's mind, an effect that was deep far-reaching and lifelong. It moved a mind that was resolute and analytical, a mind not influenced by sentiment, but governed by reason. Sardar Patel saw the beginning of a new agrarian revolution, which impressed him the most, as he was the son of the soil. This understanding compellingly drew Sardar Patel towards Mahatma Gandhi, his methods of non-violent civil disobedience and satyagraha. Thus, Sardar Patel became Mahatma Gandhi's chosen deputy commander, and henceforth, it was his support in planning and implementation, which was the most significant contribution to the various Satyagraha in India. Sardar Patel gave Gandhiji his intellectual brilliance, unstinted loyalty of a devoted, self-sacrificing disciple endowed with extraordinary organizational ability. Sardar Patel successfully led the Kheda Satyagraha of 1918 in Gujarat under Gandhiji's guidance that made Gandhiji say with pride, and I quote, a leader's skill is judged by his competence in selecting his assistants. Many were prepared to follow me, but I could not make up my mind as to who should be my deputy commander. Then I thought of Vallabhai Patel. I must admit that when I first met Vallabhai, I could not help wondering who this haughty person was and whether he could be able to do what I wanted. If it were not for his assistance, this campaign could not have been carried through so successfully." Unquote. Sardar Patel helped Gandhiji build a strong, disciplined, non-violent army of Satyagrahis and also a party mechanism capable of conducting a fight against the British for nearly three decades. With a view to keeping such a machinery in trim and high gear, Sardar Patel maintained party discipline by being even ruthless to some stalwarts turned rebels. He was the only disciple who Gandhiji permitted to launch and lead Satyagraha independent of him. The Kheda Satyagraha brought these two great men of India together. It was the beginning of Sardar Patel's public life and his active involvement in Satyagraha for India's independence. In 1922, Mahatma Gandhi was arrested and charged with sedition for writing essays against the British government. Sardar Patel abruptly found himself alone and took a resolve to take charge of the civil disobedience campaign in the state of Gujarat. Mahatma Gandhi's first article after his release from imprisonment and recovery was about Sardar Patel's leadership. He paid a compliment to Sardar Patel's outstanding organizing and administrative skill and noted that Sardar Patel had collected around himself a band of devoted workers of like mind and ability. After this, Sardar Patel led the flag Satyagraha in Nagpur, and after that, the Borsar Satyagraha in Gujarat in 1923. Mahatma Gandhi congratulated Sardar Patel for the victory in Borsar Satyagraha and wrote, and I quote, Welcome, the king of Borsar. Unquote. Sardar Patel led the Bardoli Satyagraha in 1928 in Gujarat, and that was his most famous intervention that occurred between 1925 and 1928, attending to a tax agitation in the drought-afflicted district of Bardoli in Gujarat. His capabilities as an organizer, speaker, relentless campaigner, and an inspirer of ordinary people were previously known which came to the fore in the Bardoli Satyagraha. 
In 1926, government had carried out a land survey in the district and passed a new assessment for the land revenue, which the peasants opposed. Sardar Patel in, and his associates meticulously examined the matter and were satisfied that the peasants' cause of not paying the enhanced land revenue was just. His leadership blended the foresight of a peasant and his exceptional determination and his straightforward diplomacy had the capability of a master tactician. He united villages and towns, brought about monetary and moral support from all over Gujarat for the farmers' agitation. The Satyagraha remained thoroughly non-violent, despite the forced confiscation of land by the British government. The Satyagraha in Vardoli transformed the mood of despondence in the country and it gave the Indians fresh determination. It gave the peasants new confidence. The soldiers of the Satyagraha were about 80,000 villagers of Bardoli district. Their leader was Sardar Patel. He was given the name of Sardar or the chief by a village woman called Meeteban during the struggle and the whole nation accepted this title from then on. He substantially contributed to the Sol Satyagraha led by Mahatma Gandhi in 1930. Going up to the Dandi seashore was Sardar Patel's choice and so were the leaders of the Salt March. They were his most trusted lieutenants since his earlier Satyagraha. The march was historical in its fulfillment of Gandhiji's promise to launch a campaign in protest against the British refusal to comply with the complete independence resolution passed in 1929. While yet Gandhiji was making preparations, Sardar Patel went before Gandhiji to prepare the villages for the coming ordeal. He was moving in advance as Gandhiji's forerunner. When he was arrested, sentenced to three months imprisonment and lodged at Sabarmati jail in Ahmedabad. Sardar Patel had understood that the authority of even the most oppressive government ultimately comes from the consent of the governed. And if the people turn their backs on the authorities, it will be powerless. These satyagras inspired millions of Indians to take part in the independence struggle. These satyagras led by Sardar Patel were an admirable lesson in the method of voluntary self-suffering to oppose the brute force of the government and brought people closer to Swaraj as it accomplished people's participation on an unprecedented scale. Sardar Patel was the leader. He was adorned by people for his never-ending spirit, great conflict resolution skills, dedication to work, loyalty to the country, always adapting to the group and maintaining balance. His role in the Quit India movement in 1942 was matchless. In the meeting of August 8th in Bombay, the mood of the nation was best captured in the speech given by Gandhiji's closest associate, Sardar Vallabhai Patel. Each sentence inspired people to struggle, demolish the charges made by the opponents, and yet it had the discipline of a Satyagrahi soldier. In his speech, Sardar Patel said, and I quote, We are starting last struggle for independence. So some persons threaten us and say that if we start the struggle, we will invite trouble. Some advise that we will be hampering war efforts. We have answers to all these threats and advice. Our weapon is non-violence. That weapon has enhanced our prestige since the last 25 years. Your act should be non-violent. The eyes of the world are fixed on us. And so everybody amongst us has to show to the world what and where India is. There is no other way. We want to be independent. We won't tolerate our slavery even for a moment." Unquote. Most of his speeches had a personal appeal and interest. Sardar Patel knew who, who he was speaking to and rhetorically sought to ensure that common purpose were achieved. His identification was more importantly a matter of actions than of words. Indeed, he was known as the silent leader of Indian independence. In the post-independent India, Sardar Patel emerged as an astute leader and an insightful statesman, acknowledged as the Iron Man and the unifier of modern India. As a nation builder, his unrelenting efforts towards the unity of the country brought success. A man of iron will and absolute fearlessness, he integrated princely Indian states into the Indian Union. He is one of the prestigious leaders of the world who became immortal by uniting a scattered nation without any bloodshed. He took over as the nascent nation's deputy prime minister 
and the Home Minister at a very crucial juncture in history and devoted himself wholeheartedly to ensure that the country, which was already partitioned, remained intact and united. The impact of Mahatma Gandhi's personality on Sardar Patel was tremendous, which gave him a new mission in life. He may be regarded as an epitome, as a man who expressed the national consensus in practice, who symbolized and enacted Indian values. He was also known for his composure and determination to uphold law and order throughout the country. He judged people instantly and had the courage to reprimand the erring. Sardar Patel did so judiciously, though treating everyone with the same yardstick, and his helping hand reached high and low alike. The last British Viceroy of India, Lord Mountbatten, wrote on 19 June 1948, before his departure from India, about Sardar Patel's leadership, and I quote, There is no doubt that by far the most important achievement of the present government is the unification of the states into dominion of India. Had you failed in this, the result would have been disastrous. He further added, no one has given you adequate recognition of the miracle which you and your faithful VP Menon have produced. Nothing has added to the prestige of the present government than what you have followed with the states." Unquote. T. H. Lee, first Secretary General of United Nations said, and I quote, Sardar Patel was a great leader of the world who always remained keen for the purpose and thoughts of the United Nations. Unquote. Time magazine called Sardar Patel as the boss on 27 January 1947. The Time magazine cover story underlined Sardar Patel's reputation overseas as one who had the unique ability to solve what appeared to be nascent India's difficult problem. As an administrator, Sardar Patel was a class by himself. His democratic spirit gave his officers the full freedom to express their views without fear or restraint. His greatness as an administrator was born of his personal qualities. His light-heartedness and humor would help others reach decisions with composure. He was also known as having a photographic memory and always stood by his officers. The administrator in him was conscious of others' status. He had an immense capacity for listening and listening patiently and carefully before he made up his mind. And thereafter, he was like a rock as he moved inflexibly into action. Sardar Patel's life is an inspiration for everyone, and the nation gratefully remembers his tremendous selfless contribution as he devoted himself to his various tasks till the end of his life. And his achievements have been so great as to have left indelible footprints on the sands of India's history. I once again take this opportunity to thank the Indian Mission for hosting the talk on the occasion of the National Unity Day. My special thanks are to all of you who have joined me today. Namaskar.